Thank you for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafazula. Joining me today is Dr. Santosh Kessari. Dr. Kessari is a professor and chair of the Department of Translational Neuro-Oncology and Neurotherapeutics at the John Wayne Cancer Institute. So great to have you back. Thank you. Well, I wanted to talk about your study, Pan-Cancer Profiles of Brain Metastases, Prioritization of Therapeutic Targets. Can you talk about some of the important conclusions from this? Well, this is a study um, with uh, Keras, uh, which is a commercial company that profiles uh, tumors uh, for uh, clinical use. Um, so what we did was study retrospectively the uh, data that was gathered over the years with thousands of patients that uh, had profiling done, and these were brain tumor patients with um, met metastasis from lung, breast, and melanoma, almost 17,000 patient samples. Yes. And, and, and some of these were paired uh, samples uh, with, with the brain versus the systemic metastasis versus the original primary tumors. Yes. And what we noticed when you look at the biomarkers uh, that are being tested for these various uh, uh, tumor types is that there were remarkable statist statistically significant differences in the profile in the brain versus the primary or the systemic metastasis. Interesting. Which um, we... In, in the brain, we have a hard time getting tissue readily. Yes. So these are obviously selected cases. But it hi highlights the point that you can't assume that a brain metastasis is the same as the original tumor. And that if you can, if it's feasible, that we should try to get uh, 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 tumor tissue from sure. the current uh, tumor so that we can um, identify the best therapeutic options uh, for those patients uh, at this time. It's a very important point to highlight, so thank you for sharing that. And I wanted you to also elucidate more about the role of immunotherapy in brain metastases. Well, immunotherapy uh, and the role in brain metastases is very, very important. Yes. And actually, we have data from the last ASCO uh, meeting a few, um, last summer That's right. that in, in particular for melanoma brain metastases that are asymptomatic, uh, that we don't need to immediately radiate or, or operate on, that patients who start immunotherapy, checkpoint inhibitors, can actually have a remarkable over 50% response rate. Wonderful. So yes. there are tumors in the brain, uh, in particular melanoma, because it's a very immunogenic tumor, that we can see amazing responses with immunotherapies. And I think we have to translate that into glioblastoma, of course. but also other brain metastases and what's gonna work, what drugs or combinations of immunotherapies are going to help those patients um, shrink tumors and prevent us from needing radiation and chemotherapy. So more work to be done in that area and more results to, for the future. Let's see what, what comes from those, those studies. And you've also done some very important work looking at cognitive side effects of radiation and brain mets. Are there any strategies that you can highlight for our audience um, to help minimize this cognitive decline in these situations? So the, the cognitive decline in patients who receive radiation or yes. have brain mets are multi-modal uh, uh, reasons including um, the mass effect of the lesion sure. versus the toxicity from the radiation or the chemotherapy. And I think what we have to do is be mindful of, uh, of uh, getting the effect of controlling the tumor, but minimizing the side effects by either the radiation planning or the type and amount of chemotherapy that we give our patients. But there's also uh, systemic reasons for why patients may be off cognitively, including fatigue, and uh, other systemic issues that sure. are going on in the patients that we need to understand and treat those uh, problems as well. And we do a variety of medications to try to help patients, so including um, uh, Ritalin yes. or Provigil or um, mm -hmm. uh, including antidepressants. Patients are also, uh, you know, ha much. have uh, uh, mood issues. And, um, and also structural issues. Hydrocephalus is a common problem in our patients. So understanding that and making sure that's not occurring can also help improve cognitive function. Do you have a timeline that you evaluate cognitive decline for your patients in your practice? Well, we evaluate on every visit. So every visit. You know, every, every month we assess where the patient's at and try to figure out what is the cause of the symptoms. Is it just fatigue sure. during radiation or the fatigue from chemotherapy? Or is it something else going on, including medical problems um, as well as hydrocephalus? So I think it's a chronic assessment over time 
and different things were happening uh, are contributing to the cognitive dysfunction at different stages of treatments and the disease. So keeping your finger on the pulse of the patient's trajectory and their own landscape in, with regards to treatment is important. Absolutely. So I want to thank you so much for all the great work you're continuing to do, and we hope you have to have you back on Practice Update again very soon. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you again for joining us for this Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafazula. Please join us again soon.